My name's Jeremy Denny. I run the Arizona Drag Boat Association and uh, I live and breathe drag boat racing. Okay, before we get up close and personal with Jeremy's boat, let's first take a look at the sport of drag boat racing as a whole. Much the same as drag car racing, drag boats are split into different categories, depending on their structure, engine and fuel type. The engines are not too dissimilar to those we see powering drag cars, and the fuel types and fuel delivery systems are also familiar. But that's where the similarities end. One of the main variables in drag boat classification is the hull type. There are two main hull types, flat bottoms and hydroplanes. Today's Haltech Hero is a hydroplane, the faster of the two. A hydroplane drag boat uses a three-point hull design to trap air underneath it. During acceleration, that trapped air becomes a cushion that the hydro rides on, with only the very rear of the sponsons, the torpedo-shaped pods to the sides of the hull, and the propeller touching the water. Sounds exciting? That's because it is. But hey, don't take my word for it. Uh, the adrenaline rush, the speed, got me into it. So yeah, my dad got me into racing drag boats. Started off when I was younger and uh, developed into this, <laughs> where we're at today. Jeremy's boat is a Curtis 500. Weighing just 360 pounds, it's the smallest Curtis three-point hydro hull and is optimized for maximum speed. These hulls are built specifically for the pro sportsman class. The first drag boat race I attended was in Bullhead City, Arizona. It was at Sunshine Marina, 1987. And uh, I worked putting the boats in the water. I worked on the launch ramp, helped getting the drag boats into the water. Aside from the hull, the most visually striking feature of Jeremy's boat is the engine. The 500 cubic inch big block Chevy looks imposing, and with close to 1400 horsepower on tap, it's a genuine monster. To make all that power, some forced induction is required. And that comes in the form of a little field roots blower, which provides between 20 and 25 psi of boost. It won't surprise you to learn that the engine's internals are all top shelf high performance items starting with a billet crank, JE pistons, JRP aluminium rods, billet cam, and Dart CNC heads. But how does all that power get to the prop? Let's start at the beginning. The engine is mounted in the boat backwards, with a familiar looking Lenko transmission sticking out towards the front of the boat. The drive shaft comes out of the transmission and into a system called a V-drive which, to put it simply, is a series of gears that allows the drive to make a U-turn and that is connected directly to the prop shaft. Using this system, the engine can be placed further towards the back of the boat than in a more car-like engine direct drive arrangement. The V-drive also acts as a final drive ratio, just as the differential does in your car. Jeremy's using a Casale V-Drive with a 44% overgear. Okay, so the biggest obstacle I've had with this boat is it being consistent. We raced two years uh, without going one round of, in the eliminations rounds, we didn't make it one round in two years. Uh, the boat had, we were able to make it go too fast or too slow to actually, we couldn't make the thing win. <laughs> we, were, we were just, uh, chasing data to get consistent. That lack of consistency was the main reason behind Jeremy's decision to focus on the engine management and data acquisition. Running on Sunoco methanol, the big block Chevy is mechanically injected via injectors located in the carbon fiber hat. Managing the whole package is an elite 2000 ECU with a set of coil packs and EGT thermocouples. The ECU is logging exhaust gas temperatures, as well as data from an array of sensors, including oil and fuel pressure, engine temperature, inlet manifold pressure, and inlet air temperature. All the essential information is then displayed on the IC7 dash. It's 
pretty awesome the way that we can manage the engine with their system. Uh, being able to cut cylinders down and pretty much uh, everything that we can monitor with their system, it's unbelievable. So being able to know the individual cylinder temps and being able to adjust to that is second to none. The engine is capable of revving up to 9300 RPM, but Jeremy keeps it at 8500 maximum for longevity. The whole setup has evolved over the years and he's now at a point where it just works. I can't say I actually would have done anything differently. And uh, we have a whole new program that we've put together. Uh, we actually have a capsule boat, which is the next step of this class. And uh, we've been working on that boat for the last five years. And that's the next, next step we're going to. It's hard to appreciate just how fast these boats really are, mainly because most of the footage is filmed from the shore or from some distance away. But they're quick, very quick. The first time we ever raced this boat, had no big plans for it, didn't think it would do anything spectacular. And our first full pass we ever did, we raced a thousand foot course. The first full pass it ever did, we ran a 604 at 147 miles an hour. Let's just ponder this for a moment. This boat flies over a 1,000 foot distance in six seconds flat and reaches speeds of over 180 miles an hour. That's quick in anyone's books. The last uh, three races I've raced, we have won. And uh, it's all, I can truly honestly say it's due to that. Uh, we would never be able to be exactly where we're at if we couldn't adjust our timing and uh, to be exactly where we want to be. And uh, to be able to do that, I mean, it's crazy. It's awesome.